ladies and gentlemen. So I was uh, contacted by this organizing committee, uh, none other than the CEO himself, to present on this 3MCPD issues clarified. Uh, well, uh, this is the, my presentation outline. What are the three? What are 3MCPD and GE? This, this is the basic question. Some uh, might have heard it only for the first time, and some is just uh, what I call a, a revision. And then how 3MCPD and GE develop? Uh, why 3MCPD are uh, very important? Uh, and then we will talk about uh, the status of 3MCPD in Malaysian palm oil, and also how to reduce 3MCPD, and finally, of course, the conclusion. Well, uh, what uh, 3MCPD E, E is excess, uh, and GE. What are 3MCPD and GE? So look at the, the, the terminology here. 3MCPD is monochloropropane they are very, very, very mouthful, right? And such as, as well, 3-MCPD, 3-monochloropropane ester. That is 3-MCPD, this is 3-MCPD-E. And then the uh, glycidyl ester is, uh, okay, now, look at here. Why, why is it you know, possibly carcinogenic, uh, carcinogenic to humans, uh, nephrotoxic, uh, nephrotoxic also reported by EFSA, and GC, uh, GE also probably carcinogenic to, to humans. That is why it is uh, so important to vegetable oils, not only palm oil. So what are the 3MCPD GE again? This is basic structure of 3MCPD E. This is 3MCPD monoesters. This is 2MCPD monoester. This is 3MCPD diester. This is glycidyl ester. Uh, basically, the key, the key point here, the key word is always chlorine. Yeah? And the presence of chlorine here, look at here. Uh, chlorine, yeah. The key word is chlorine. Chloro, chloro, yeah. Chloro is always about chlorine. So uh, now we move to the next one. So, how 3MCPD uh, develops? How it was developed? So, uh, factors contributing to formation of 3MCPD in palm oil uh, because the chemical compound will develop. Uh, during the process of vegetable oil refining and so on. So the presence of uh, digrasserides or DAG and chlorine, yeah, the key is again, is, oh, sorry, the key word is uh, again the, the chlorine uh, in crude palm oil, bleaching clay and steam. Steam also sometimes if you use tap water and so on, you always have uh, chlorine inside them. Uh, then the other one is acid degumming and acid uh, activated uh, bleaching clay, uh, high temperature. This is uh, where we can control both. All of these is a uh, uh, controllable uh, items. Uh, high temperature is a very important component. Whether you know whether you can just be successful in producing low MCPD or high MCPD, low output or low throughput. Okay. Uh, again, uh, so MPOB has conducted. Uh, Trials, yeah, several trials, this is of them. So looking at uh, uh, 3MCBD, it was found that acid degumming followed by bleaching causes 3MCBD esters in bleach oils. If you look at our uh, pollen, for example, is RBD, refined bleach and deodorized. Bleach and deodorized. That's, those are refined, it's okay, just a, a physical refining. Uh, uh, bleach is of course using the, the, the bleaching agent, uh, clay and so on. And then this uh, uh, refined, refined is, uh, sorry, deodorized. Deodorized is always using the temperature. Now, uh, FFA here, for example, and DAG are not directly correlated to the MCPD esters, but somehow they are weakly correlated. Uh, high deodorization uh, temperature, as I just mentioned, led to the formation of 3MCPDE. So that's how we have to understand the problem first before we can uh, solve the, the, the problem. Come with the solution. Uh, again, factors contributing to formation of GE. Uh, GE is formed from DAG of above 230 degrees Celsius. That is the temperature. Uh, above above 300, 
260, actually it's 260. That is the norm for the uh, deodorization temperature. Typical DAG values for palm oil, at least in Malaysia, is about 6 to 7 percent. Some reports suggest that the amount of GE uh, form is correlated to the amount of DAG. Okay, DAG contains about 3 percent uh, would reduce GE content and uh, post refining, as an example for refining again at this temperature would reduce the GE to 230, around that, that uh, temperature range. Uh, so now, why is this GEG so important? Why is it so concerned? Well, uh, in May uh, this year, that of May, EFSA, European Food Safety Authority, released a report uh, reporting on the levels of this the term as contaminants in vegetable oils, including palm oil. It's just not targeting palm oil alone, but all other vegetable oils. So EFSA proposed, uh, because uh, I just mentioned it's carcinogenic, carcinogenic and, and so on, and also uh, cancerous, uh, attacking the liver. Uh, EFSA, this is the TDI, TDI is storable uh, daily intake of uh, 0 0.8 uh, uh, microgram per kilogram or PBB parts per billion uh, body weight yeah, uh, for 3 m PDE and the levels, current levels in vegetable oils here uh, 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 documented here for a number of palm oil facts is uh, relative high compared with other vegetable oils. So, uh, what are the consequences? Why is it so important? So, this is the consequences First, on health. There are other consequences uh, as well. Consequences on health. So, EFSA, Codex, uh, WHO, stated that 2 and 3 MCPD are, as I mentioned earlier, they are carcinogenic, uh, uh, nephrotoxic. This is uh, in relation to the kidneys uh, failure with the one or both kidneys. And also, if uh, it is the 3 MCPD is uh, free, free, free time MCPD is carcinogenic. This is also a mouthful word uh, to, to swallow. Well, this is the consequence on health. So if it causes uh, cancer, it uh, uh, affect your kidney and so on, why do we consume? Why are we not affected so far? So let's see whether or not, why it is not. Nobody has the answer yet. But there are some what they call uh, extrapolation being done by uh, EFSA, 3 MSD was found to be carcinogenic to small animals and has been extrapolated to possibly pose same threat to humans. So it is not scientifically proven yet, right? So as I mentioned here, there's no study against this is small animals, even the larger animals, including clinical trials uh, for humans as well, are still yet to be made available. So the other consequence, if of course uh, why we are here today, is about trade. Yeah, it's economics, consequences on health. Uh, sorry, consequences on trade. So uh, if uh, palm oil is a poison, for example, or other vegetables are poison, so who wants to buy a poison and, and consume? So the uh, palm oil consumption market uh, market intake or consumption will be reduced, market share. Consumers will shy away from palm oil. So, for example here, uh, Italian supermarket has stepped up the new palm oil label. We, uh, we uh, will be hearing uh, from our next speaker uh, after this. So other European, if Italian has done so, so other, other cons uh, consuming countries might follow suit as well. So these are possible consequences. So uh, the other consequences is so called the, the plantation industries uh, themselves and especially on the small farmers. Here we refer usually refer as smallholders, but for the general uh, public uh, it's also referred as small farmers. Small farmers in Malaysia uh, owns roughly about four hectares of uh, all palm area. Yeah, it can range between 0 0.5 up to 40, uh, 40 hectares. That's the limit for 
uh, the definition for smallholders. Anything below that 40 hectares is uh, the, uh, terminology is uh, for smallholder farmers. So, if nobody is buying palm oil, nobody consuming palm oil, this will affect these people. Yeah, why, why, why uh, palm uh, oil palm was introduced in the 1860s and so on? Because it is uh, a commodity that can elevate poverty in this country and at the same time uh, generate uh, what call resources and income for the nation and good for health and etc. etc. So, 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 where, so we have some 400,000 people employed in plantation uh, directly, it was mentioned, 600,000 just now uh, by the uh, Honorable Deputy Minister. Uh, so, about of that is about two, more than 200,000 are uh, independent small farmers. These are the only livelihood or source of income for this uh, group of people. So, monthly income, for example, Felda, as I mentioned in the 1960s, Felda was developed uh, until now. Uh, you look at that compared with the poverty level, national poverty level of 360 or 190 USD. Uh, Felda is doing uh, relatively well because they are uh, organized farmers. Uh, however, the independent smallholders, uh, the, the opposite of organized farmers is independent farmers, so they are also doing relatively well. Uh, we respect to uh, farming uh, all, uh, all palm. So, uh, status of 3MCPD in, in Malaysia. Uh, service carried out uh, several surveys that we have done. Uh, levels of 3MCPD in this country for refined palm oil is 5 to 6 milligram per kilogram. Uh, refineries at 1 to 3. So several families, however, can manage with their good uh, management practice and so on. They were able to reduce to up to uh, one pass, uh, below one pass per million. So now, uh, look at here. Three MSPD and RBD, refundation with rice palm oil. This is a survey for, uh, 2014, it's still ongoing. So we have this, uh, 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 for example, these are the distribution of three MSPD. So the levels of, for example, here, yeah, this is one, okay, the levels here is one. Uh, a lot, uh, a cluster here. A uh, number of samples here, yeah, up to 10 or more than 10 here. Uh, there are also clusters above these, these uh, average figures. Uh, the other one is uh, 3MCPDE in cooking oil, or uh, basically is palm oil in. Uh, surveyed uh, samples uh, produced from various Asian countries. Uh, here, the countries of uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam and Kazan, these are the cooking oils from the shelf. So we did this survey uh, at MPOB. So Malaysia, for example, this is the, the one in blue. Uh, the level is you know, uh, 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 around uh, uh, 2.5, uh, some even uh, below 1. Uh, this is Indonesia, this is Thailand. Thailand, one sample is extremely high. Uh, we don't know the reason, but uh, this is just a survey. And then uh, for Vietnam here, yeah, and also, sorry, uh, this is Philippines, this is uh, Vietnam, and also uh, one sample from Pakistan. Pakistan is about similar to that of uh, Malaysia and also uh, Indonesia. Uh, so our recommendations, how to reduce 3 MCPD and also GE, is of course uh, we need a low FFA, free fatty acid content, and low DAG in CPO. Okay. The first one, then rinse or wash the CPO. There's also suggestion to wash the FFB. But they one uh, economically not feasible yet. So CPO, there's some technology. We are still identifying the most suitable technology uh, prior to refining process. So we need to wash. Wash meaning basically physically washing with water. Yeah, because uh, oil and water don't mix. So we can uh, separate it out uh, again. And then combine acid degumming with water degumming, again using water. And use bleaching clay uh, lowers, uh, with lowest total chlorine content, uh, while pH. pH is very important, uh, almost neutral or alkaline. Yeah? So pH is another, uh, what do you call it? it's another element 
that is controllable, which can reduce uh, levels of 3 and CPD and GE in vegetable oils. So, uh, here, the, the second last slide here, reduce the adolescent temperature. Current, uh, current uh, practice is 260. So, you can reduce it lower or 230 because, as I mentioned, the throughput will be lower, right? Throughput will be lower, but the output in terms of quality will be higher. So, there is a decision to be made by various companies whether to go for certain segment of the industry. Yeah? Because uh, certain levels of uh, 3MCPD and GE are required for certain uh, product uh, uh, formulation, for example, young adults and also for infant food. So, post-refining under mild condition lowers GE. Yeah? Post-refining. Okay. Now, how to reduce the, again, uh, effect of water washing. This is an example of uh, some trials, that, uh, sorry, some trials that we did. Uh, yeah, uh, for example, two, two samples, yeah, uh, two groups of samples, yeah, two groups of samples is untreated. Uh, this is wash. Yeah? Uh, this is an example. Washing of these ones basically reduce the levels of 3MCPD excess about 50%. Okay, this is another trick that we can, can, can follow. Uh, now, uh, how to, okay, 3MCPD and GE, there's a method of analysis, uh, AOCS uh, official method. So, 3-in-1 and so on, these are the methods, uh, these are the flow uh, which can be carried out. MPOB has these facilities which we also counter check with other labs uh, worldwide to get this accredited. Uh, 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 worldwide and also, but we are also providing MPAB also providing training to our uh, our industry players uh, to help each other in terms of uh, uh, screening, uh, uh, measuring the levels of the contaminants in palm oil and also with other oils as well. Uh, well, uh, this is again the the action plan, uh, action plan in reducing 3 MCPD. Uh, you seen the, this photo from Pomandu just now. Uh, current status is uh, 3MCPD is about 5 to 6. Uh, GE is about 7 to, to, to 8 uh, ppm. So the levels to be reduced is yet to be determined uh, pending a stakeholder's consultation and also uh, uh, pending on the acceptance by the importing country. So although, uh, for example, uh, EFSA, has reported that they, they are proposing 0 0.8 parts per billion, but we are yet to de de determine because this will have some uh, uh, economic implication in terms of pro production, yeah, in terms of sale and so on. So levels of reduction of 3MCPD in uh, FFB, for example, in using fertilizer, this is going to be a long term. Uh, fertilizer now, if you currently the fertilizer, for example, that are using chloride content is potassium chloride (KCl). KCl, let's say, is about 1,000 tons, uh, 1,000 ringgit eh, per ton. But you change to uh, eliminate KCl, eliminate the chlorine content, replace it sulfate, for example. Calcium, uh, sorry, uh, KS2O4, calcium sulfate, uh, potassium sulfate, that will increase the, uh, the, the, the price of the fertilizer or this uh, input uh, about three times, about 3,000 tons, uh, 3,000 ringgit per tons. Uh, uh, so these are the levels uh, that this is the action plan uh, together with uh, Formando, we've been, 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 been brainstorm, uh, brainstorm uh, and also with uh, parties uh, such, of course, the Ministry of Plantation Industries, and commodities. Uh, next step, this is the, the uh, re, uh, what we call detail of uh, phase one, phase two, and phase three. Uh, first, uh, of course, now we are targeting the refine refineries first because this is the end, end product within the supply chain. Uh, also, uh, uh, phase one is also at the refineries. Uh, we, uh, with uh, MPIC together with MPOB and Pemandu, we have call ourselves an expert team or form an expert team to identify a soluble, uh, uh, a possible uh, and feasible technology to be adopted by the industry in, in, in a short period of time 
uh, short term, medium term and long term. Uh, again, this is a proposed activity, this is a timeline. Uh, I am to, uh, for example here, immediate action is in, into the technology uh, partner, sourcing of technologies and then uh, pilot uh, or, or test run until uh, uh, we get uh, regulate, uh, possible uh, regulate changes at refineries with proven mitigation measures. So it will take some time uh, until 2019. So phase three, as I mentioned, is it's a long term uh, effect because uh, plantation or plantation research, uh, biological research will take a longer time. Agronomy research, fertilizer research, for example, uh, at least uh, some uh, to minimum because the effect of fertilizer uh, of plants on uh, fertilizer or on weather at least uh, two years. But before that, we have uh, two years. Is for example, there is the first first uh, uh, first reaction by the plants. But we, of course, we need statistical uh, uh, proven technology and also statistical uh, uh, strength. Uh, therefore, we need a longer time than two years, or maybe five years, six years. So this is also in the pipeline. Uh, okay. Uh, now, no. What we do now? What we are, we are doing here? We are communicating, communicating with, with the stakeholders. So next step is communication, or sometimes we call it advocacy, uh, outreach program. So we are doing now uh, road shows for awareness program. As this member. Some members of the industry also have not heard this word. Yeah? When we had our stakeholder consultation in May or in July, uh, first early July, some of the captains of the industry also, this is the first time he's hearing this word. So is this it's a new thing for, for some people. So this roadshow is necessary. And also discussion, engagement, which we have done early on. Uh, first round uh, to get to, to where we want to go. Uh, and also to at what uh, level of this MCPD we want to achieve. That's what we done in, in, in July, and we are going to the uh, again every 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 now and then. Okay, so again, so now uh, communication here issues. Okay, issues that in Europe, for example, in EU, uh, three MCPD and GE. The other is biodiversity bill, uh, uh, proposing increase in tax, the biodiversity bill is also uh, in terms of uh, deforestation, uh, no food label, uh, no palm oil labeling and so on. So we went to, to uh, here, we went to Europe twice this year. Uh, let the, first, the first one was led by MPUB uh, in, in, uh, in April. The second round of uh, European tour was led by the minister himself. So we met uh, all parties of concern, policy makers, uh, for example, in Europe, EU, EU members of parliament, uh, Belgium, and also France. So seminars on 3MCPD was well accepted uh, for the first time, although it just uh, after the summer holidays in, in, in Europe. Normally, when we, we carry out uh, Seminars on palm oil, we really get, we usually get around 40 or 50, maybe 60. This time is about more than 150 people uh, are very, very concerned or attended this uh, seminar that we, we, we conducted. Okay. Uh, we also uh, continuous discussion with Costam, and also we have our counterparts, uh, especially through MPOC, that uh, we have alliances in, in Europe. Uh, so these are the combination. Again, these are some of the publications that uh, MPUB has produced. This is just only MPUB, but there are other publications as well. Uh, especially if you go to proceedings of the Eurofat lipid, you can find a lot of uh, a lot of publications there, technical publications. So this is some example that have uh, been produced by officers of MPUB. So uh, so what happened here? So recommendations is implementation of quality improvement policies. Uh, millers should not you know, bypass or anything that you know, can, can improve or can reduce these three MCBD levels. Uh, introduce a code of practice is also another recommendation. 
and then also effect of process uh, 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 using a 3SPD, alkaline refinery, for example, or uh, alkaline refinery or neutralization. So, in fact, some of these uh, technologies or some of these methods will be taken up by members of the industry. So, an alternative, I say, take care and so on, reduce cost, uh, less soaps and so on. Well, uh, conclusion is safety is never compromised, should, it cannot be compromised. Because it's, it is uh, cancerous, it, it will affect your, your kidneys and so on. What if you are adults or young adults, especially infant? But whether it's true. So we have been living uh, with uh, you know, consuming palm oil I mean, throughout our life. Before palm oil came into Malaysia, during my younger days, it was coconut oil, saturated, those kind of things. Uh, but now uh, coconut oil is the gem of the palm of the oils. Uh, Net to studies again, as I mentioned, impact of, uh, on 3SPD on humans. Uh, levels are to be accepted. This need to be done uh, fairly quickly uh, to be accepted by the consuming countries to produce higher quality uh, CPO before towards the uh, production of low levels of 3MCPDE and also GE. So action plan has been developed. Thanks to Ministry of uh, Primary, uh, Ministry of Plantation Industries Community, together with Pemandu, uh, MPUB, and our stakeholders of the industry. So we continue to communicate with our stakeholders. So before I conclude, so I would like to invite everybody to join us again next year, PIPOC 2017 at KLCC. Uh, KLCC in this case is not this this KLCC, but at the foot of this this is Kuala Lumpur City Centre but we are having it at the foot of KLCC, which is Kuala Lumpur Convention Centre. Thank you very much. Where, where are you? Can you raise your hand? Oh, okay, good. Okay, my name is Hamza from Delima Oil. Eh? Okay, uh, you are mentioned now, you mentioned just now, uh, to improve uh, the, the low level of, uh, to limit the low level of 3 MCPD, <laughs> We need to wash the CPO, am I right? Yes. Okay. Uh, to wash the CPO with alkaline water, then what will be the increase in the CPO price? That is my first question. Uh, my second question, right now, the CPO uh, specification uh, traded in the market is uh, limit to 5% max FFA. Uh, is it mean that uh, uh, to reduce this 3M CPD content, we need to revise the CPO specification to lower FFA content? And uh, my third question, last question, is the palm oil process, is the processed palm oil buyer willing to pay premium for the low 3M CPD content oil? Okay, the first one. Uh, will it uh, know what the price of uh, low 3 MCPD or GE palm oil? Right, that's the first price. Uh, because uh, the cost, as I mentioned, will increase if you reduce uh, the, the temperature from 260 to uh, 230, right? That is the limit. If you go lower, you know, it will be more, uh, less economical. Uh, that's the first uh, increase in price. The second one is, of course, the first is actually is the first to install this equipment. Right? The equipment that is called huge uh, investment that is required. That's why we are looking at a suitable technology which is feasible, uh, not, not so burdened, and so on. So to answer that, no, the price will, won't be affected, as I presume. It's just that the level of acceptance, right? So certain niche market they need certain level of three MCPD. But now, if, if we, our, our, for example, our three MCPD levels are high, they will classify our palm oil as industrial oil. Industrial oil will be cheap, right? So uh, higher, uh, lower three MCPD quality oil will be higher. So there are going to be a differential in prices, uh, presumably. Okay, the second one, whether uh, the level of FFA uh, need to be, you know, uh, the level, of especially the program specification, need to be you know, revised or not. 
Well, the level they said maximum, max, right? Maximum five percent. So maximum is up to the industry whether to you lower it down. So the the lower the level of FFA, the better the oil, a bit in terms of quality, in terms of acceptance. So meaning that if FFA is low, as I mentioned as well, level of FFA is low, the GE and G, uh, 3MCPD is also low. Is correlated, highly correlated. The third one, whether they're going to pay a premium, uh, that yet to be seen. Because so far, for example, this certification, RSPO, for example, they promise premium, you know, premium price. So far, it's yet to be seen significantly. So I hope I've answered your question. All right, thank you. Anybody else? Any questions? Yes, there's one in the back. Yes, this one. Okay, in the middle, and then there's one in the back. Um, hello, thank you. Um, and uh, I'm Martin Rashford from uh, Novozymes. Um, two questions. First of all, um, you used the quote of the terminology um, possibly carcinogenic, probably carcinogenic, um, and you had one caption free 3MCBD is carcinogenic, and then you quoted the EFSA source, and you also quoted another source. Um, could you just clarify, please, um, whether it is carcinogenic or not, or, and what new um, light the EFSA study actually shed on that? Okay. And the second question I'd like to ask is, um, you said the, um, in discussions in Europe that the um, limit of GE likely to be first half 2017, and the limit on G on 3MCBD likely to be set the end of 2017. How likely is it that those milestones will actually uh, be, un be, be, be reached? And um, what would the time limit be on compliance after that? Thank you. Okay, uh, the first one. The words possibly, uh, what's the other word? Yeah, possible, you know, uh, because it is a quote from EFSA report. It is not uh, the word that, that we, we are using. It's not underlined because it's not scientifically, you know, sound. This is uh, extrapolation. That's why they are cautious about themselves as well. So if it's not scientific, that's why you are using the word possible. It's EFSA report. All right. The second one is. Uh, excuse me. Can you repeat the second question again? Oh, the timeline. Um, um, but just to go back on the first question okay. again, you did say free 3MCPD, free with an F, not a TH, is carcinogenic. So where, where did that come from? Oh, that is EFSA report. That's EFSA, EFSA so that's, report. So they've made both statements. Yeah, both okay. statements, yeah. Okay. The second one is on time frame. What, what, what's the likelihood of um, GE limits being set by end of first half uh, 2017 and uh, 3MCPD limits being set? to uh, uh, end of the year, um, yeah. are there going to be one or two PPM? Will it be um, a, a staggered thing, so it starts at two and then goes down to one PPM? Would it be something like that? And um, would there be um, a time frame for implementation? Yeah, in fact, uh, if you look at the levels uh, set by uh, EFSA, is 0 0.8, right, parts per billion. So if you want to get it tomorrow, is you know, no way we can achieve that. Uh, just like, uh, no, we want to fly to, to the moon tomorrow. No, we have to get things ready. Get our no, Apollo 11 you know, ready first before we can fly. So now it is work in progress. So we just had our, consu uh, uh, our industry consultation back in July. So committees are working uh, currently to source. And we are also looking for technologies that can be uh, use uh, actually or economically to be adapted. We are yet to find that uh, technology or to identify the technology for c consumption by the industry. So based on that, there is uh, uh, when we cross the bridge, then only we are targeting because oh, 0 0.8 just now uh, by EFSA proposed to be end of this year. So we, that's why we went to Europe. No, it's not possible. Yeah, it's not possible. I'm not, I'm not sure about other oils, but palm oil is not possible. And then it's a work in progress, so we are yet to, to determine the levels of the MCPD, as I mentioned, to be accepted first by our producer 
and also by our consumer. So that is still work in progress. So they, we are going again from time to time to Europe. And this time possibly with our country, uh, neighboring country, uh, two major producing countries, Indonesia, we might be going there to okay. Europe again um, soon. Thank you. Can I, if, I could, if I could just... Can I ask a question? We only have, uh, we, we just need to allocate the time for one more question. There was one more question from the gentleman in the back. Question? It's the last yeah. question. Please. Um, if you look at Iftar 0 0.8, I'm, I'm Neil Sunsunoy Mills. Um, more or less likely, the limit the EU will put will be 0 0.5. Um, many commercial infant food formula companies have already put in 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Yeah. Now, um, do you think it is possible for palm oil to achieve 0 0.5 ppm with the existing technology which we have? Okay, uh, thank you. I think it's just a direct answer, yes. We are possible. In fact, there's one company already producing that low level of 3M speed for infant formula. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed. Let's give him another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen.